Hi, my name is Darren. These are my hands. And today I am going to sculpt, mold, and create this fully dimensional, totally accurate. It looks like it came right off the pages of the comics and was crafted by Sergio himself. No, it doesn't. Birthday cake topper candle thing. All right. Just so you know how I made this grew birthday cake thing. I'm going to tell you the four steps I had planned out and then I'll show you the process and the big failure moment when it came to this grew the wanderer birthday cake candle thing. And it's awesome. Step one was to make a clay sculpt of my candle, exactly the same size and shape that I want the final wax candle to be. Step two, make a silicone latex mold out of my clay sculpt. And I'm not gonna use that super expensive two-part mold stuff from the craft store. I'm gonna use hardware store stuff. After that, I'll be able to pour my candle using melted wax and my fresh grew head silicone latex mold. And the last step will be to paint Gru's hair and headband with some colored wax. So let's get to it. Step zero. There's not supposed to be a step zero. Well, there's a couple things I want to address before I start making the candle. First, if you're here because you're interested in clay sculpting and candle making, thanks for dropping by. Please leave a like if you find this video entertaining because parts of it may not be very helpful, though some parts might be. And to my Gru friends, you probably remember way back in the spring when we took a look at the many great Gru corner boxes. In that video, I was struck by the awesomeness of the Gru head candle that Sergio drew on the 50th issue anniversary cake. And he did a pretty cool one on the 100th issue cover as well. I'm about to celebrate a 50th anniversary of sorts too, so I figured if I'm ever going to make my own Gru head candle, this is the time to do it. I want my candle to be a sculpt of Gru's head, but I don't actually want it to be the candle. You'll notice in Sergio's drawing that the candle is on top of the Gru head cake topper. So I'm going to make a Gru head like Sergio drew and just put a little candle on top of it, even though I fail in my original attempt. I do end up with a great cake topper with a burning candle on it. So partial win, right? Okay, let's go. Here are a couple prototype sculpts I've made of Gru's head. I'm just using ordinary kids modeling clay, and I think I've learned a few things by sculpting these heads. First, I've learned that it's hard to sculpt at such a small size. So I'm going to try to go a bit larger. I've got to balance the size of my Gru head with the amount of material I've got for my silicon latex mold. Now, it's pretty obvious that Gru's nose will be essential to his look. For these prototypes, I tried to make his nose with one lump of clay folded back on itself. But look at the cheese dip statue. It almost looks like there are two distinct blobs of clay. So I'm going to try that for my final sculpt. I'm going to show you how I sculpted this Gru head. Um, and if you'd like to jump ahead to about the 18 minute mark, if you're not interested, you can do that. What I started doing was molding the head into that familiar Gru the Wanderer egg shape that I love from the classic Gru. So lots of molding and rolling and comparing with the drawing that I made. Next up, I took some clay because I'm going to make that fringe of hair that goes around the side and back of Gru's head. You can see I made a, a big ish snake and then a thinner snake. And then I'll just use my thumbs and my fingers to kind of mash that into the sides of Gru's head and the back of his head and just kind of make that clay all come together. Something that I was conscious of avoiding doing here was 
creating like a Darth Vader-ish type helmet because that just doesn't look very good. Now, I've got these nice, cheap, but nice wooden clay sculpting tools. And I'm using the edge of this tool to kind of push back the side, the fringe of Gru's hair, kind of separate it from his face. And then I use the blunt bottom portion of this tool just to mash the bottom of that fringe in with the clay because I just want it to stick together uh, nice and solidly. Lots of work um, making sure things are kind of looking right. You'll see that as I do this, there's a lot of finessing and then changing things up. What I've got here is um, a thin edge that I don't like to the bottom of Gru's hair, so I'm just kind of folding it back under, making it thick. And then, of course, I just compare it just to make sure that the size and proportion looks right according to the drawing that I've got. Now, from time to time, I will take uh, one of my prototypes, like this little guy that I have here, and compare what I'm doing um, with this sculpt to what I've done in the past. So what I'm doing at this point is I am kind of narrowing the bottom of the head that comes into the neck um, underneath Gru, trying to make it the right size. And yeah, it's looking pretty good when I compare it to my drawing here. Tons of finessing, but what I'm going to do next is think about how the hair is going to work. And there's kind of like two different zones of hair. There's the, the sides and backs of Gru's hair, and then there's the top of Gru's hair on the top of his head. So I'm rolling out what um, might end up being Gru's bandana at this point. I'm going to wrap it around where I think it should go on Gru's head. And I just use this little pokey stick to poke some holes around there so that I can see the area that is going to be the top of Gru's head. It's going to have those lines going front to back, the strands of hair that go front to back. And I use the same tool that I had earlier just to kind of um, carve in the hair. Now, in the past, I had tried making dozens of snakes of hair and placing them along the sides and the back and the top of Gru's head. And it just, it's a lot of work and it didn't really turn out that well. Taking a look at the cheese dip statue here, the method that I'm using, I think that's similar to what Sergio did making that cheese dip statue. So I will use that cheese dip statue from time to time to make sure that I've got proportions and sizes right, because it turns out that the, the sculpt that I'm doing today is actually pretty similar in size to that cheese dip statue. So you see me pulling out a blob of clay, because I'm going to start working on the nose here. This is going to be the bottom part of his nose. I'm going to do his nose in two separate spheres. And I use my tool to kind of flatten, flatten the back of the nose to make it shape um, similar to that of Gru's head, so it'll be easier to connect. And then I can use one of my clay shaping tools here to kind of pull the clay from the nose into the head, just to make sure there's a good connection there. And then I've got this round tool, the same tool that I did the pokey bits with, and I use that to kind of roll the clay to make it smooth. Grabbing another sphere, another circle, another ball of clay, I use the tool to kind of shape the contour so that it will attach pretty flushly to Gru's face and to that bottom chunk of the nose. And it's too big, so take a bit off and work it over again to make it fit just, just the way I want it to. <laughs> well, it's a little finagling to get it, to get it in just the right spot. But that's looking like it'll do pretty well. So again, the tools come out using kind of the blade to connect 
and then the roly the roly pokey tool to smooth things out to kind of keep that bump part of Gru's nose looking good and that profile is looking not too bad yeah so pretty cool lots of finessing here though sometimes with tools sometimes with my hands and I think what I'm ready to do at this point if it looks good is I'm going to Try working on the mouth. But yeah, that looks really good to me. So just using this tool just to mark where I think Gru's mouth will be. Now I'm not certain at this point how I want to do Gru's mouth. You've seen kind of that clown mouth that I did in the past. Right now what I'm trying is like just kind of a, a bottom lip. And it's like, okay, that, that works. Um, maybe I'll try something else though later on. But... I know that that'll, that'll work. Maybe I can come up with something better later. Making sure that the hair's looking good, and it's uh, getting completely underneath where I want to put the headband, and uh, that's great. So, at this point, I am figuring out where the eyes are gonna go, using the tool to make these eye sockets. Now, on one of the prototypes, I had these really buggy bulgy out eyes that I wasn't very happy with at all even though on the Sergio cheese dip statue Sergio did pretty bulgy eyes I'm going to try to make my eyes a little bit flatter not as not as sticky outy so what I'll end up doing here is rolling a couple balls trying to get them the right shape and uh, then sticking them in the eyes but I get distracted um, and I start working on other things. At this point, I figure, oh, maybe I'll do the rest of Gru's hair. So starting at the bottom of the fringe, I mark out where um, Gru's hair is going to go. Oh, but look at that. I'm distracted again, and it's time to put balls of clay in where Gru's eyes are going to go. So I try this out, and maybe it's a bit big but I can mash it in there, and uh, yeah, that seems to work for me. It's kind of got that delineation around the eyes without looking really buggy outy. And I can take my little pokey tool and add some pupils. Hmm, do I want to keep it like that? I think what I want to do at this point is actually fill the pupils in with clay, and then my thought was that... When I paint, I'll say paint in air quotes, with wax later on, that I can do kind of like white eyes and then black pupils, and I'll just paint that over top of the, uh, hopefully, what becomes the wax sculpt. So there's Gru's eyes, and they're all right, I guess. Um, so maybe my decision is to start working with some more hair. And... What's happening here is I'm making a nice delineation between the side of Gru's face and the edges of his hair. So you can see that I'm just using the tool to carve lines into Gru's hair. And each of those lines helps to show where the side of one of his strands of hair goes. And uh, it's not a tedious process to do. It's quite a relaxing process to do this. Just over and over again, dividing it up evenly, trying to keep things relatively straight, relatively even. And look, look at that. That's kind of coming together like a Gru head. You know, if I showed that to you and you were a Gru fan, you would say, oh yeah, that's Gru. I can tell by the nose and the hair for sure. Still a lot of work to go. So get going on that work. Now what I'm doing here is trying a different style of mouth. I rolled out kind of like a flat ball and poked a, a, a hole in the middle of it. So he's kind of got one of those ooh type mouths. And 
I actually like that a lot. I think there's something that I can do with it, but let me just check, see if the bottom lip, if I can make the bottom lip look better than I had it before, then maybe I'll do the bottom lip, but I think I like, oh yeah, that looks dumb, doesn't it? So I come to the conclusion that I like the round mouth better. So I'm going to go for that. And uh, yeah, that's going to work. I'm going to make another one. Maybe it'll help to make it on this tool to make it fit a little bit better. I'm using the tools just to attach it. Actually, what I want to do is make the top lip kind of part of Gru's face and just have the bottom lip sticking out. So it's kind of like a pouty, ooh, kind of look. And uh, yeah, I like, I like how that's turning out for sure. That's a lot of fun. Okay, so let's think about Gru's bandana. Now, when I think about these kind of bandana things, like if you think of Rambo, you just think, okay, he's got some cloth and it's folded and then tied around his forehead. And it's pretty flat. But when I think of Gru, my favorite drawings of Gru and his bandana is when Sergio draws with dimensionality. So it's not just this flat piece of fabric, but it's like this sausage that is wrapped around Gru's head. So I want to have that kind of dimensionality to Gru's bandana. I do the bandana part of it, and then I have the tassels here connecting them together and just kind of giving them a little bit of separation, a little bit of motion in it. And this is a fun part, the knot. Now there's no way I could actually tie the knot into the bandana out of clay, but I can fake it by using other pieces of clay to make it look like there's a knot there. In fact, I don't know if what I'm sculpting here physically could be a knot or a representation of the knot here, but I think it looks really neat. So there's the one big piece and a couple small pieces and uh, stick it onto the head and we'll take a look and see how it looks. Oh yeah, I think that's looking great. You know, Gru is looking really great here. I think he's turned out quite nicely. That's a big nose. That's what you want with Gru, a big nose. But that's a big nose. Now, the bottom part of Gru's head, you're probably not gonna see very much, so it's not that critical that the hair doesn't join perfectly to the neck, but it's all right. Next thing we're gonna do here is mold Gru's head. So I have to find a vessel that is the right size that I can put Gru's sculpt in there and then have a little bit of area around it to fill with the mold material. And I think that this red cup is closest to what I wanna do, but it's so close. His nose and the back of his head I think I ended up making Gru a little bit bigger than I intended to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to probably cut the bottom of the cup off. And that way Gru will sit higher in the cup, if you kind of know what I mean. And there'll be a little bit more space around the front and the back where his nose and the back of his hair is. So the plan is to cut the bottom of the cup off, find some sort of vessel to put it in, and then cast the mold of the Gru candle in that cup. So I've got my silicone latex tube of caulking here, and I'm just going to attach the cup to the base. And you know what, that's, that's not the right size. I need a bigger one here. So I've got a, a bigger plate here and I've got the tape out. I will tape this cup to the plate and then we'll put a bead of the silicone and latex stuff in the bottom. Then I'll plop Gru's head in there and fill it up. Actually, before I put it in, I am going to oil up Gru because I don't want 
the silicone and the latex stuff to stick to Gru. So nothing better than a nice oily barbarian when you're going to make a, a mold for a birthday candle. And unfortunately, I lost the footage of me squeezing all of the stuff into the mold. I filled it all up, and then I used some of my tools just to kind of poke down the silicone and latex so that it filled all the crevices and I got all of the air bubbles and stuff out. One week later, all right. this just isn't feeling like it is setting the way I was expecting it to. So yeah, I've given it, I've given it a week. The birthday is coming. See the top is set. Let me just take this off and that is goopy in the bottom. Yeah, that's no good. That, um, that didn't work. Okay, that's disappointing. What are we gonna do here? Um, I think it's clear that I need some newspaper because this is potentially going to be a messy process of fishing Gru's head out of this cup of goop. I hope the sculpt is still good. Look, there's Gru in there. Okay, he did not disintegrate. That's good news. This is not... This is a big mess. Yeah. Yeah. Get this off here. Wow. That's a lot of... Um, yep, that did not work at all. This is not a job for the desk. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I'm going to take this away and clean it in the utility sink. I will be back. Ugh. All right, look at that. He's okay. You can see there's a couple spots where I stabbed him. And yeah, he looks, the texture's a little bit off. You can see right there in the nose where I got him and on the top of his head. But I think that we can salvage this. For the most part, he's okay, though. I got some ideas here. First thing I'm doing is just adding definition back into the hair and um, using my tool to kind of flatten and put some definition back into Gru's nose, to the fringes of his hair around the side. And you know what? Look at that. He's, he's turned into a pretty, pretty good barbarian. I think we've recovered all right. And I've got this idea. I'm not totally in love with the eyes, so I'm going to see if I can scrape out Gru's eyeballs here. Yeah, turn aside if you're squeamish, because I am plucking out the eyes. There's one, and there's the other. So Sergio did the big bulbous eyes. I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to see how it works out. So roll in a couple balls, which I think are about the right size. For Gru. I'm going to stick them in there, but I'm not going to flatten them down nearly as much as I flattened the old ones down. And just like I used the pencil to poke a hole in Gru's mouth, it's time to poke Gru's eyes out. I mean, to poke pupils in Gru's eyes. And you know what? That's not too bad. In fact, I think I like that better than the old eyes. And who cares if they're not solid there? Okay, and there was always this weird discoloration in the clay on Gru's cheek. So I've just smushed down a thin, thin piece of clay, covered it over, and I'm going to try to uh, make that a little bit better. All right. And you know what else would be cool? Eyebrows. So making a really thin snake out of the clay. Let's see if I can figure out a way to get it on top of Gru's head and give him eyebrows. I don't know, is this gonna work? Maybe, let's see here. Put it on top. Hey, you know what? That's not too bad. And so after the failure, after the tribulation and trials, I have got a Gru head with great eyes, with funny eyebrows, with a funny mouth. Yeah, it's got a bit of damage from the process, but look at that. It's pretty awesome. And I put the candle on top. Look at that. Birthday cake 
cake topper, candle head grew. That is awesome. Definitely a happy birthday for me with Grew the Wanderer. I don't know, maybe I'll come back to it again sometime, see if I can turn it into a real candle. But for now, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give this video a like. Please make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on because I plan to be back really soon with another GruTube. Take care, everybody. Strange as it is to say, Gru's kind of cute. <laughs>